Today we're going to compare the two largest cities in the triangle, which are Raleigh and Durham. And I'm going to share with you my local insights, which should help you understand what's the real difference between Raleigh and Durham. And hopefully that'll help you decide which city really makes the most sense for you. And we're getting started right now. Hey, I'm Will Walford, real estate broker with Berkshire Hathaway. Now, if this is your first time to my channel and you want to learn everything there is to know about Raleigh, North Carolina, and the surrounding area, then make sure you click that subscribe button and ring the little notification bell. That way you're notified every time I put out a new video. Now, I think there are a number of things to consider as you compare Raleigh to Durham, such as the relative size and population, cost of housing, the quality of public education, and of course the entertainment scene. So let's start with the size and population. And then I'm gonna give you a little background on both. So in Raleigh, the population is around 480,000 compared to just under 300,000 in Durham. And I would generally say Raleigh has just more of everything because Raleigh's bigger. It's 147 square miles as compared to 112 for Durham. And Raleigh is of course the state capital, which means there are tons of government jobs here, as well as big businesses that are located in and around downtown downtown Raleigh. And I'll tell you, this is super important because this gives downtown Raleigh enough people around the clock to support our restaurants and retail for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and into the night. While Durham just doesn't have that critical mass of people all the time. And why is that? Well, here's what I'd tell you. You see, Durham was once considered the tobacco capital of the world. And at one time, all the tobacco major companies had operations in Durham. But as the tobacco tobacco, furniture, and textile business dried up, well, so did Durham's economy. And in the early 1990s, Durham was actually in serious trouble. But luckily, Durham was able to attract both public and private investment that would transform the failing downtown area by restoring and repurposing the old historic tobacco buildings into office and retail space. And then Durham capitalized on the success of Bull Durham the movie in 1988. By later building the Durham Bulls a brand new state-of-the-art stadium, which opened in 1995, right smack dab in the middle of the downtown area. And if there's anybody out there that disagrees that that new stadium was a turning port for downtown Durham, I'd love to hear from you. So please leave your comments below and let's get some chat going about what really turned Durham around. But here's a look at the old baseball field known as the Durham Athletic Park. And that park is still used today, but I can't imagine a big minor league team playing there. And just 13 years later, Durham knew they had another great idea when they opened the Durham Performing Arts Center, which is commonly known as the DPAC, and it attracts over 200 high caliber performances a year. So this is a super nice facility. In fact, it's known around the country, one of the top venues that holds less than 5,000 people in the country. And this brings a lot of people to Durham. And think about that for a minute. You've got a minor league baseball team. And so when is baseball season? It's, it's not all year, spring into early fall. So that's bringing a lot of people in. A lot of people are going to the shops. I think Durham Bulls Stadium holds like 10,000 people. And the DPAC, they hold like 2,400 people. So if you have both those things going at the same time, you're gonna bring a lot of people in. But Raleigh, on the other hand, they've got Memorial Auditorium, they've got other event spaces, but they've got big companies located downtown that have lots and lots of workers, plus the government jobs, plus the people that live there. And so you always have enough people to keep the businesses active. In other words, you've got enough people that a restaurant can stay open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner if it wanted to. But in Durham, you don't. That is a huge difference. Downtown Durham is naturally going to be busier on average when the Bulls have a home game and the DPAC's hosting a major performance, which means downtown Durham's business is going to fluctuate much more than businesses will in Raleigh. But that's not all because there's another area that you really have to consider when you think about Durham, and that's the Research Triangle Park, or RTP. And for those of you that don't know, the Research Triangle Park is considered one of the most prominent high-tech research and development parks in the United States. And that's super important because the RTP sits just between Raleigh and Durham. In fact, it's smack dab in the middle. 
and it's just an eight mile drive from downtown Durham. So I would say moving forward, downtown Durham will likely house a lot of people that relocate to the area to work at the RTP, and they want to live close to a location that's convenient to all the bars, restaurants, and entertainment. And to facilitate this influx of people, Durham is building lots and lots of apartments and condos, and all that's already underway. So overall, I would describe Durham as a little bit behind Raleigh, and that's really only because Durham had to reinvent itself after it lost all the old industries that once fueled its economy. But I do think today Durham really does seem to be on a big sustainable upswing that should continue to transform the city for years to come. Now Raleigh on the other hand is what I would call a really well-planned city with tons of resources. And the median home price in Durham is 400,000, which is slightly higher than the Raleigh median price of 389,000. So if you thought Durham was cheaper than Raleigh, think again. Now the homes in Raleigh and Durham are very similar, but you will find about 70% more homes and neighborhoods in Raleigh than in Durham. So for example, say you're looking for a higher end single family home that's priced between 750 and a million. Well, in Raleigh, there were 439 of them sold in the last 12 months, while in Durham, they were just 132 sold. So I know that example was for a high-end home, but those ratios are gonna be similar on all price points because Raleigh just has more of everything. All right, so if we compare the K through 12 public schools in Raleigh to Durham, you'll find they're in two completely different school districts. Raleigh and its surrounding suburbs are all part of the Wake County public school system, which ranks eighth overall in the state and Durham ranks 62nd. And as you can see on the map, these report card grades for the two districts with Wake receiving a lot more clusters of A-ranked schools. And another thing I'll tell you on that note is Wake County Public Schools is like the 15th largest school district in the United States. Now, that's not necessarily a plus, I can tell you, because with that large, super large size, there are a lot of politics inside the Wake County Public School System. And I tried to have my daughter transferred from a school because our school, it's really in North Hills, well, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's one of the worst ones in the Wake County Public School District. And you can't just transfer. I mean, it's very difficult. Why? Because there's so many people coming into Wake County every day that the schools are at capacity and they're having to build more. So schools are critical. And schools can be very costly because in Raleigh, certain areas, and generally the real estate's gonna be more expensive where the schools are better. And I'm not telling you, I'm not saying that, that your child can't do great at one school or another, but I will say that some areas have a lot higher ranked schools and people tend to keep their kids in those schools as opposed to private schools. And private schools in Raleigh, we've got lots of them, but that, that's gonna run you about $25,000 a year. So, you know, you might wanna check the schools out and make sure they're to your liking before you buy property there, if you wanna to go to public school. So the thing, same's gonna to apply to Durham. And these rankings for the schools are calculated by niche.com, using data from the Department of Education and the US Census Bureau, as well as millions of independent reviews and survey responses. And I gotta tell you, I mean, I think they're pretty accurate. Next, let's talk about taxes. And I suspect the numbers I'm about to share with you will probably shock some of you, because all in all, they're pretty daggone attractive compared to a lot of the big cities around the country. But I'd like to know after you hear these taxes, how do they stack up against your taxes? Leave me a comment below. Are your taxes higher or lower than they are in Raleigh-Durham? So property taxes in Raleigh are a combination of state and county taxes, with the county tax being 60 cents per hundred bucks of assessed value. And the city tax rate is 37.3 cents per $100 of assessed property value. And that gives you a total of 97.3 per $100. Add on to that $20, flat rate, $20 per year for recycling. And that's the total amount you're gonna pay in property tax for your home for the year. So for example, if you're buying a $500,000 home in Raleigh, your tax bill is gonna be about $4,885 per year. How does that compare to you? 
And there are also quite a few places in Raleigh where you can actually have a Raleigh address, but you're not actually inside the city limits. So in that case, you're just going to have to pay the county tax, which is, again, 60 cents per every $100 of assessed value. So with that drop in taxes, you're, of course, you're going to lose a lot of your city services. So don't expect to see a lot of sidewalks and you're probably not going to have many parks or greenways nearby, but you will save some money. It will be cheaper. You just got to decide if it's worth it. Another drawback to living outside the city limits is you will likely be on community water or you'll have a well. And with that well, you know, you're going to have to test it regularly to make sure your water is safe to drink. And you may also have a septic system. Well, not may have, you will have a septic system. So that's not a huge big deal, but I think city water and sewer just makes life a lot easier to be honest with you. So those are the drawbacks. Lower taxes, don't have some of the benefits, but still probably a pretty good deal. $3,000 for a $500,000 house. That's not a lot of money for taxes. Now in Durham, your taxes are gonna be a little bit higher than in Raleigh because the combined city and county tax rate in Durham is 1.2739 per every $100 of taxable property value. So. That $500,000 home in Durham will cost you about $6,370. So that's about a $1,500 difference per year in taxes. And if you want to live outside the city, same as with Raleigh, you'll just have to pay the county tax, but it'll cost you a little more in Durham than in Raleigh. Yeah, but the county tax in Durham is 0.7722 per every $100. So that house outside the city in Durham is going to cost you about $3,611 a year compared to $3,000 in Raleigh for the $500,000 house. So a little bit more, probably not a deal breaker, I would hope, but um, there are differences. More expensive the house, the more the taxes, and that's just the way it is. Now, as I alluded to earlier, Raleigh and Durham both have robust economies and healthy job markets. And the top industries in Raleigh are education, state government, healthcare, and technology with the state of North Carolina, NC State University, and Wake Med Health Systems being the largest employers. And Durham's big employers are Duke University, Cisco Systems, and IBM. And both Raleigh and Durham have a robust sports and entertainment scene. And Durham, as most of you should know, has Duke University, which has one of the best college basketball programs in the country. And they've also got the Durham Bulls minor league baseball team that's located smack dab in the middle of downtown Durham's trendy American tobacco district, which is a super cool place to visit. And remember, I told you about Durham's tobacco heritage at the beginning of the video. Well, the Durham Bulls stadium was actually built around the old tobacco factory complex that's been turned into an amazing restaurant and entertainment district with lots of shops and restaurants. And of course, it's subsequently called the American Tobacco District. And if you want more information about downtown Durham or downtown Raleigh, I have videos on both that you should definitely check out. But getting back to the Durham Bulls, you could actually turn an afternoon at the ball game into an afternoon of eating and entertainment. Because I can promise you, when you go to a game at the Durham Bulls, there are tons of vendors all around, but you've also got a really wide selection of restaurants. So it's a great place to go to dinner and then go to the game, or go to the game and then go to dinner, or go to the game and then go out. There's a lot to do, there's a lot of choice. It's a fun place, bottom line. And if baseball is not your thing, you could catch a game at Cameron Indoor and watch Duke play basketball, which just might be the highlight of the entire Durham sports scene. Now, Raleigh, on the other hand, has the Carolina Hurricanes hockey team, which shares the PNC Arena with the NC State men's basketball team. But the Wolfpack, like Duke, also have a strong following in football, basketball, and baseball. And Raleigh recently approved plans for a professional soccer and entertainment complex to be built in downtown Raleigh. So I would say both cities have a thriving sports scene if you like college athletics, hockey, and minor league baseball. And I do want to mention that I know this is a video about Raleigh versus Durham, but in all honesty, I go to Durham a lot. People that live in Durham come to Raleigh a lot. A lot of 
times people that live in Durham work in Raleigh and people that work in, live in Raleigh work in Durham. So, I mean, Durham's a nice city. Raleigh's a nice city. They're both really nice. I'm just letting you know the differences. There are definitely differences. I'm from Raleigh. I'm a Raleigh native. I can't imagine living in Durham because, I mean, Raleigh's where I live. Raleigh's what I know. But I enjoy going to Durham. And I think, I mean, there's lots of people that love Durham that that wouldn't want to live in Raleigh. Durham's great. And I just want to mention that it's a super easy commute between Raleigh and Durham. So if you live in either city, you're going to be able to take advantage of what both cities have to offer. But I will tell you that if we're calling this the Raleigh area or the Raleigh-Durham area, then Raleigh's the biggest city, then it's Durham, and then it's Cary. And when you're in Cary, eh, Cary's different than Raleigh. But I'm just trying to tell you that the suburb towns, Fuquay, Apex, Holly Springs, Wake Forest, they ain't nowhere near the size of Durham. Don't even think that for a second. So here I'm comparing Raleigh versus Durham because Durham, at one time, if they hadn't faltered on their economy and their industries that were there, well, they might actually leave Raleigh. So it's a good, good town. And if you're somebody that wants to be close to a lot of things, well, you've got Raleigh and then you've got Durham. And then after that, you've got Cary. Those are going to be your three big places. But downtown Durham is going to be the most similar to Raleigh of any place until you get to you know, Charlotte or Greensboro. But I think it's important that I tell you that the commute's very easy between the two because both Raleigh and Durham have solid entertainment venues. But I can promise you Raleigh does have quite a bit more. So while Durham has the Durham Performing Arts Center or DPAC, which truly is the premier venue to catch a Broadway show, Raleigh does have the Memorial Auditorium, which was established in 1932. And I can promise you it's almost as impressive. The big difference is the DPAC is newer construction and the DPAC was built so that from every seat, you've really got a really great view and the acoustics are phenomenal. So the Memorial Auditorium, it's older, but it is impressive, but the DPAC is better. So live in Raleigh, go to the DPAC. Live in Durham, come to Memorial Auditorium. They're both good. But when it comes to live music, Raleigh dominates the live music scene because we've got multiple venues and I'm not talking about small venues. I mean, Durham has some really cool small venues but i'm talking about concerts you know 20 plus thousand people so they don't have those we've got walnut creek amphitheater and that attracts all the big names as far as concerts go and walnut creek amphitheater is located very close to downtown raleigh so it's very very convenient we also had the pnc arena where the hurricanes and nc state play basketball and hockey and that holds i think 22,000 people or something like that maybe a few more, but they have concerts in there. That's really good. And also we have the Red Hat Amphitheater. And the Red Hat Amphitheater holds about 5,000 people. Outdoor venue in downtown adjacent to the Fayetteville Street District, right, right there, Warehouse District, Fayetteville Street District. So that is probably the coolest place to see a show because you are straight up in downtown Raleigh. You could go have dinner, go to the concert, go to the concert, go have dinner, go to the concert, go out, whatever but it's in the middle of downtown Raleigh. So that is a pretty sweet venue. Smaller, of course, um, but it is really cool. So Raleigh's hands down got Durham beat on the live, live music. And also, if we ever have a big act come to town like the Rolling Stones or U2, those shows, those will be held at the Carter Finley Stadium. That's where NC State plays football. And that stadium holds just over 57,000, I believe. So. You can have, I mean, I know that there's plenty of stadiums around the country that hold more than that, but that's a pretty kick-ass show, in my opinion. So I think the big difference between Raleigh and Durham comes down to the fact that Raleigh's bigger in size with a larger, more consistent economy. And it's true. Raleigh does have about 70% more homes and neighborhoods. But both cities have a thriving food and brewery scene and cultures that honestly they're very very similar so if you're planning to move to the raleigh durham area and you've got questions or you'd like help finding a home then i'd love to connect with you 
please give me a call, shoot me a text, or send me an email, and I would be glad to help you. And I'll see you on the next video.